Thomas. 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 How many times did I call your name? Three times, right? OK. In case you are not aware, in my village, when an elder calls your name three consecutive times, it means you are in big trouble. Thomas, why are you so pessimistic? Why do you always look at things from a negative point of view? Why are you so suspicious? Why can you not just believe for once? Why can't you just trust for once? Thomas, now I know why your parents gave you the name Thomas. I have not checked myself, but I overheard some people saying that your name means the doubting one. Where were you when Jesus appeared to the other apostles last Sunday? I know. Why were you not with them? I know. You were not with them because you were so suspicious and doubtful that you decided to isolate yourself and to become man alone. And when the other apostles saw Jesus, and they were so eager, so happy to share the news with you. They broke the news to you. And what did you say? You had the boldness to say, except you set your eyes on the wounds made by the nails on his hands, you would not believe. Thomas, who do you think you are? Thomas, this is not the first time you are showing yourself. I have access to your track record. You remember the other time, not long ago, when Jesus got the news that Lazarus was dead. Jesus asked all of you, his apostles, to follow him to Bethany, where Lazarus lived. You remember what you said? You said, let us all go and die with him. Who told you that Jesus was going to Bethany to die, if not your negative mind? Not only that, you remember what happened after that? At the Last Supper, Jesus washed the feet of all of you, the apostles. And after washing your feet, Jesus said, I am going to my Father, and there I will prepare a place for you to join me. You remember what you said after that? You can't deny it. It is on record that while the other apostles were trying to digest what Jesus said, you immediately jumped in and said, how can we know the way to where you are going when we do not know where you are going? Thomas, why must you question everybody and everything all the time? Answer me, Thomas. Have you no answer? Why are you keeping quiet? And just so you know, in my village, it is an insult to remain quiet when an elder is asking you questions. OK, you want to talk now? I'll listen. Tell me. Father Emmanuel, Father Emmanuel, Father Emmanuel, how many times did I call your name? Three times, right? Okay. Just in case you are not aware, in my village, when an accused person calls your name, three consecutive times, it means you have crossed your boundary. Yes, you have accused me of being guilty of doubt. 
You have accused me of looking at things always from the negative point of view. But can you not see that you are even guiltier than I am in this matter? Can you not see that you are the one who has failed to recognize the positive role I have played in the story of the resurrection of Jesus? Can you not see that you are the one who is not ready to acknowledge the good things I have done? Can you not see that you are the one who is only interested in what you perceive to be negative about me in the gospel? Father Emmanuel, yes, you were right when you called me Thomas, but you were wrong when you said that the name Thomas means the doubting one. Just for the record, the name Thomas is the Greek form of the Aramaic name Taoma, which means twin. Did you hear that? Twin. And so, as a twin, I do not only look at one side of the coin. I always look at all sides of the story so as to be able to come to an objective conclusion about every story. You only heard from gossips that my name, Thomas, means the doubting one, and you believed. Why did you not ask me, the owner of the name, to tell you? Learn to listen to the other side of the story before you come to conclusion. Father Emmanuel, with all your studies, with all your reflections, have you not realized that my doubt has given more credibility to the story of the resurrection of Jesus than the fate of the other apostles, than what the fate of the other apostles has done? Have you not realized that it is because I doubted the resurrection of Jesus that now no one is able to truly say that the story about the resurrection of Jesus was concocted and propagated by a bunch of gullible and uneducated apostles? Can't you see that it is because I doubted? Can't you see that it is because I came up as the chairman of the opposition party among the apostles, that it can now be said that even among the apostles, that the story of the resurrection was first challenged and tested before it was trusted? Can you not see that my doubt has given authenticity to the story of the resurrection? Can you not see how I have helped you? If today, among you, you have atheists, skeptics, and unbelievers who are questioning the truth of the story of the resurrection. You can now tell them that they are not the first. You can now tell them that over 2,000 years ago, someone who was there and saw the things that happened questioned the authenticity of the story. But after the questioning, he came to the realization and made the confession, my Lord and my God. Father Emmanuel, why are you so ungrateful? Can you see what I have done for you? Now, thank me. Say thank you to me. Do you know why? Listen to what Jesus just said. Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Can you see why I asked you to thank me? Jesus just blessed you because I doubted. If I did not doubt, Jesus would not have promised blessings on those of you coming after me who would believe even without seeing. Instead of calling me names, take time to thank me. Yes, I know you see me as the worst of the apostles with the exception of Judas Iscariot. 
You preach so eloquently about my doubt. But why do you not also focus on the good things that I have done? You remember what Jesus said the other day? Jesus said that the first will be last and the last will be first. Can you not see that my life is a testimony to what Jesus has said? It is on record that I was the last of the apostles to believe that Jesus truly rose from the dead. But it is also on record that I became the first of the apostles to profess a belief in the divinity of Jesus. Do you understand what I mean? For three years, we were all with Jesus, all of us, the apostles. We went around with him, and we called him Lord. We called him Master. We called him Teacher. We called him Rabbi, and that was, that was it. No more. And even the other day, when Peter gave that answer that led to his promotion, all he said was, Messiah, he called him the Christ. He called him the son of the living God. And that was it, no more. But what did I do? I became the first to profess the divinity of Jesus. I became the first to call him God. Have you forgotten? I said, my Lord and my God. Yes, I doubted. But after he showed himself to me, I went ahead of the other apostles and I said, my Lord and my God. But why is no one talking about my faith? Why is everyone talking about the fact that I doubted? And now you have joined them. I should be promoted because I was the first to call him God. Father Emmanuel, let this be a lesson for you and your parishioners. It is never over until it is over. The first can be last, and the last can be first. Yes, do not go about bragging about the fact that you were born and raised Catholic, that you received all the sacraments early enough in your life, that you went through Catholic schools all your life, that you have remained in full communion with the church with no irregularities. Yes, do not go about thinking that it is by your powers that you are not a single mom. It is not by your strength that your marriage is still standing. Do not laugh at those who have fallen away from the faith because you do not know their complete story. The one you laugh at today may become better than you tomorrow. You remember the story of that young man, Saul? How he went about persecuting Christians. We thought we were better than him. We thought he was going to hell. But when he gained his conversion on his way to Damascus, what happened? He went ahead of the rest of us, the apostles. He became more popular than the rest of us. And today, there are more books attributed to him in the Bible than anyone else in the Bible. What about the first one to join Jesus in heaven from the cross? Not any of us, the apostles. It was one of the thieves crucified with him. The first becoming last, the last becoming first. Father Emmanuel, instead of spending your time today to talk about how I doubted, spend your time today to talk about how the appearance of Jesus to the apostles reveals the gift of divine mercy which we are celebrating today. When Jesus appeared to his apostles, he did not come on a fault-finding mission. He came with a special gift. He came to them and he said, Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. The one who sins you forgive will be forgiven them. That was all he gave to them. He did not come finding fault with them at all. One would have expected ordinarily that he would have been disappointed at Peter for denying him three times. One would have expected Jesus 
to have scolded the young apostle, no, the other disciple, the young one who ran away naked when Jesus was arrested. It would have been okay for Jesus to have condemned me for doubting the testimony of the ten apostles, but he did none of those. He forgave all of us, even before we asked for forgiveness. Father Emmanuel, I was angry with you when you began your homily by calling me names. But you know what? I have forgiven you because Jesus forgave me. Because Jesus forgave me and gave me peace even before I apologized to him. And so now, you go and forgive all those who offend you even before they apologize to you. And then you will find peace in your life.